I want to go there. I want to see where they found the pram. There's not much to see. Well, we'd like to go there anyway, Inspector. All right. I ought to put you in the jug for a hundred years. See they get home safely. Yes, sir. We've just about completed the search, sir. Thanks, Sergeant. What are they looking for? Whoever took a fancy to your baby left the pram here, then carried him away. I'm hoping they dropped something in transit. Drop what? Pencil, button, glove, anything. He's found something. Teething ring. Is it yours? That's rubbish, isn't it? Just rubbish. Sometimes just rubbish has a story to tell. This button, for example. An unusual shape. See, like a shamrock. Easily traced. And these ice cream cartons. Banana flavor. This bag came from a shop in Slough. Oh, there's a bus ticket there from the same place, sir. You know anyone in Slough, Mrs. Cochrane? No, I've never heard the name before. This is torn from the page of a cheap novel, for the look of it. Might lead somewhere. But how do you know these bits and pieces have anything to do with Simon? We don't, for certain, but we'll find out. And what is happening to him while you're chasing buttons and ice cream? Who's looking after him? Sue, you're only making it worse. But they don't understand. He may be cold or hungry. He's only just learned to walk. If they put him down, he might fall. Suppose they are stairs. Is this all you're going to do, Inspector? Rake over this rubbish? We aren't as inactive as we seem, Mr. Cochran. All over the country, hundreds of men are looking for your baby. Slides are being made of his photograph. They'll be shown on the cinema and television screens. This is just part of our routine. We think it's important. I'm sorry. I can't bear my wife to be so frightened. Back home, this is a constant fear. I suppose people here bring up their kids without thinking about it. Can't we do something? Anything? Go home and get some rest, Mrs. Cochran. We'll call you directly if there's any news. Who are they, sir? Young American couple. She designs dresses. He's an official at the embassy. Which doesn't sound very American to me. Oh, I dare say they're abroad somewhere. Check up on Cochrane Lyle. Ask the foreign office to find out what he does at the embassy. There might be an element of international blackmail in it. You never know. Right, sir. It's a devil of a thing to happen to a couple in a strange country. They won't sleep much tonight. Come on, Sue. We must get some rest. Try and lie down for a little bit. I'll get you a hot drink. I don't want anything. I can't stop thinking about the Jordan baby. Jordan baby? It was when you were in Japan. I was at your mother's waiting for Simon to be born, when this little boy was kidnapped. Right in the next street. Every day it was on radio, on TV. Every day for six weeks. Then they found him. And he was dead. I can't stop thinking about that baby. You must stop, Sue. It won't do any good. Now, come on. Take your things off and lie down. How can I go to bed if we don't know what's happening to Simon? He is so helpless. Let's go out, Lee. Let's look for him. We can't go around the streets at this hour. Wherever Simon is, he won't be out. How do you know? We'll find him. I'm his mother. Sue! Let me go! Let me go! We can't leave it to the police. They don't care. He's my baby. He's mine. Let me go! Stop it! 
Simon's my baby, too. Oh, Lee. Oh, Lee. It's for me I've been so terribly afraid. We may get some news in the morning. The police are very smart here. I've always heard they were the best in the world. But what are they doing? They're so calm, so slow. I guess that's just the English way, honey. The button, sir? Hmm. Where's my coffee? Coming, sir. Well, I want it. Give me tea this morning, leave alone my coffee. Drag me out of bed before six in the morning. I suppose Craig's still snoring. Oh, I, I don't think so, sir. He, uh... This button was sewn onto red velvet material. Good weave, expensive dye. The button itself? Ah, oh, there you are. Yes, I did my snoring in criminal records. Uh, any luck? Lots of criminals, but nothing that fits my needs. Mm. This is an artificial horn button, hand-carved. Excellent quality, fine workmanship. Wouldn't be more than a handful made, in my opinion. Start on the exclusive button houses. You'll find one or two in Soho. Yes, sir. Something on the bag, sir. Beginning of a name written in pencil. I've had a photograph taken. Fingerprints report the Slough bus ticket carries the same dab as we found on the bag. There's no doubt the crumbs inside were recent. Chocolate eclairs. There's the same stain on the bag and on the ticket. Not more than 24 hours old. Is the slide ready? On the machine, sir. Hmm. Anything else, sir? Yes. My coffee. Yes, sir. I agree with you about the screw of paper. I think it was torn from the page of a cheap novel. Once more, I think it was torn by a baby. I'll show you the little nail scratches. There. There, see what I mean? You know how young kids grab? Yes. What's that smudge? Library mark, I should say. What library? Oh, that's your problem, Inspector. You tell me anything about the paper? Millions of knives of this stuff sold every year. Any watermark? Mm, too cheap for that. What about the type? Oh, pretty general. See how close the setup is? Yes. Probably published for cheap libraries. Mm. What literature? The Count held Dawn close. Lean, experienced hands moved over white shoulders. This was the moment of decision, yes or no. Dawn chose... Interesting. I wonder what she chose. Give me the book sales, and I'll tell you her fate. Hello? It's for you, Inspector. Oh, thanks. Craig here. Yes? Description, please. About 18 months, as near as you can say. Fair, blue eyes. What quality of the clothes? Expensive. Good. Uh, did anyone think to call the child Simon? They did. And he reacted. Fine. I'll pick up the parents and be over straight away. No, thanks. I know the house. I hope so. Sounds very like. The answer to his name. In case Simon's lost his penguin. Thank you, Nanny. A big kiss for baby for me, madam. A really big one, Ritzy. Your bright mixture. Thanks. Thank you. Have they found him, Nanny? Yes, Mrs. Bellamy. Isn't it wonderful? They've gone to fetch him.
too. Home, please. Okay, driver. Sorry you had to go through that, Mrs. Cochran. But it seemed almost certain. He appeared to answer to his name. Calling J5. Calling J5. Message for Detective Inspector Cray. Message for Detective Inspector Cray. Kings Road, Chelsea. Jessel and Company. Jewelers. Smash and grab. Kings Road, Chelsea. Proceed and investigate. Over. Craig speaking. Message received and understood. Proceeding. Would you like to drop us, Inspector? We can get a cab. Well, I, uh, I ought to proceed. Of course. Thanks. Okay, driver. I'll get a cab. He's gone off on something else. But of course he has, honey. His day's a full one. But I don't understand. I thought he was trying to find Simon. So he is. We ought to look for him ourselves. We care. Where do we look, honey? Please think. If you were standing there, you must have been able to see something through the open door. But I wasn't standing here, Mr. Cochrane. No, she was behind this counter all the time. And if you're standing here, you can't see the street. I fixed an appointment with the Master Printers Association for 3.30, sir. Oh, good. Oh, checking up on Dawn's fate, sir. The torn bit of that novel... Yes, I don't know. What about the Slough bus ticket? Green line, morning run. Got in about 11. That means one of us will have to go down to Slough, then. Yes, sir. I'd better check these next. I'm afraid if that Cochrane baby's missing more than 24 hours, it goes out of the category baby theft into possible murder. Mustn't get emotionally involved in this case, Lyle. Worst thing in the world for a policeman. Oh, I wasn't, sir. I learned to remain abstract when I was a rookie, but I like to pigeonhole everything. Really? I can't help wondering, though, what it would feel like if it was Pam and me. When we're married, of course. When you've finished your self-analysis, Lyle, you might be kind enough to let me know what you propose to do about that shamrock button. Well, I've got a list of the London houses, sir. This Cochrane case smells like a lot of work to me. It will be eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. I have to ask the superintendent for another sergeant. You won't take me off it, will you, sir? All right, Lyle. But make no mistake about it. This baby's really lost. What do you mean it's all true? It's a fairy tale in a book. It isn't. It's about a mother who lost her boy. There he is, Peter Pan. He found a lot of other lost boys, and they joined his gang and fought the pirates. Did they ever go back to their mothers? I don't know. I haven't read as far as that. had the notification, madam, and we're on the lookout, of course. But there's no sign yet. Fancy little Simon. What a dreadful thing. You told them about the penguin, of course, didn't you, Mrs. Cochrane? Oh, yes, and about the pram. A light grey pedigree. They've got pictures of Simon, everything. I saw Simon's pram. I saw Simon, too. Where? Here. Who was wheeling the pram? It wasn't Simon's nanny. Who was it, then? A lady in a check dress. Was she a big lady or a little lady? Horrid. When did you see her? Tea time, yesterday. Your Simon was crying. Which way did she go? Try to remember, dear, or they won't be able to find the horrid lady. I know where she lives. Take me. Is Simon out of nappies? Oh, yes, for some time now. Really? Well, it's very early. Nanny must have forced him. Oh, it's all forcing nowadays. I hear it can have the most disagreeable results later in life. Really?
Which floor? Up there. I'm not going up. I'm frightened. Come on. I won't let her hurt you. Is that where she lives? Who? The lady in the check dress. I don't know what you're talking about. I feel sick. I want to lie down. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick! I thought I heard you, Zoe. Mum, I'm going to be sick! I'm afraid she's frightened. My baby's been stolen and your little girl says she knows who took it. Have you been telling fibs again, Zoe? Have you? Answer me. Uh, good morning, Miss Gill. I, I hope Zoe didn't disturb you last night. Zoe always disturbs me. Go in and practice while she's out. Zoe's a dreadful little liar, Mum. It seems ingrained in her. I can't seem to knock it out of her. I do hope she didn't cause you any trouble. If his mother's going to ride in a sidecar every Sunday, he can find some other girl to decorate his pillion. Excuse said, me. So I said to him, I said, it's all very well for you to say that rain's good for the air, but you don't have to find the three and six for set. Yes? Would you mind taking a look at these, please? I'm sorry, we don't take entries back over here. The little basket's over there. So I said to him, I said, either I get this sidecar, or else you're going to hear more yes. What are you trying to do? Get off with me or something? I'm a police officer. Oh, that's no guarantee of good behaviour. <laughs> Ask him to show you his warrant card. Dad says that always needles them. Oh, yeah. oh. well, uh, what do you want? Do you remember anyone with a baby buying any of these here yesterday? Mister, I sold 30 dozen of them things yesterday, and half the people what bought them had baby. This baby? No. No, I, I never saw that baby. Are you sure? Quite sure. How about you? No. All right, thanks. I say, mister, you look a bit tired. Would you like an ice cream on the house? Some other day, thanks. He's nice, isn't he? That's her. Give her a minute to settle. Where have you been, honey? I've been worried about you. I've been looking for you, but I was afraid to go too far in case the telephone rang. What have you been doing, Sue? Walking. Where? Nowhere, really. Die kleine Frau müssen was essen. Ohne Nahrung kann man nicht leben. Ich will keine Nahrung. Ich will mein Baby. Henrietta Gay of the Daily Sun. Is your wife at home? I'm sorry, no. Oh. I thought I saw her coming in just now. Surely she wouldn't refuse an interview with the Daily Sun. We've promised not to keep Mrs. Cochrane long. She's not up to it. My wife must rest. Lee! Lee! Don't send them away, Lee. Surely publicity is what we need. You're so right, Mrs. Cochrane. I'm Henrietta Gay of the Sun. I very often read your column. And this is Ian Cruikshank, our features photographer. How do you do? I. Excuse me. What a charming photograph. May I have it? Please. 
We've got the routine police notification with the photograph of your son. That was in the morning editions. But my editor thought a special feature. Well, it's all right with me. I'm all for it. What is it you want us to do? Well, perhaps we could start in the nursery. Ian would like some photographs. Will you come up? Were you with the baby when he was lost, Mrs. Cochran? No, Nanny was. You're with Caspari, the teenage man, aren't you? Yes. Busy with the drawing board, I suppose, when it happened. No, I was dining with a customer from Sweden. You know how it is in my business. Of course. Were you with her at the time, Mr. Cochran? I couldn't locate her. Double nightmare, the whole thing. <clears throat> Could we have a picture of you by the cot, Mrs. Cochran? It would have a big appeal, ma'am, like a fine interest picture. The more they read, honey, the more chance there is of somebody recognizing him. Okay. How are you getting along with the police, Mr. Cochran? Great. Excuse me, sir. There's a Sergeant Cook from Wallam Green downstairs. Oh, yes. Send Sergeant Cook up, will you? I showed the Rose Gallery to Mrs. Chase. She thinks one of those four characters snatched the bag. It's not why Toby. I got him a pontoon at the scrub last year. Big Ricketts wouldn't operate on my manor. Edward Benny. Let's have that joker in. Yes, right away, sir. Come in. Can I help you, madam? Cook, sir. Sergeant Cook reporting for duty. All right, Davis. Who sent you? Superintendent Hodge, sir. Thought I might be useful on the baby theft. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that button? It's a handmade button, sir. Very expensive. It came off a good coat. I'd like to know what coat and who wore it. See if you can find out. Yes, sir. Here's a list of button houses. Might help you. Thank you, sir. Is there any news at all? About the baby, I mean. No, it's early days yet. I don't suppose the mother thinks so, sir. Henrietta Gay. I didn't neglect my baby. I didn't. Lee, do you think if I'd been pushing that pram, he'd still be with us? Honey, a thousand women leave babies outside shop windows every day. Mothers, nannies, aunts. It's nobody's fault if some crazy person comes along. Crazy and... person? I didn't mean that literally. Snap out of it, Sue. So this dame Henrietta Gaze had a basseture. But another couple of million people have seen Simon's picture. That's what we wanted, isn't it? I suppose you're right. I wonder... What do you wonder? I wonder when you'll start thinking it's my fault. What luck did you have? Well, the Master Printers Association were very helpful, sir. They've got about 300 members with the machinery for producing cheap novels of the kind we're after. That's fine. That solves the whole case, then. Chase them all. Yes, sir. Anything in from the hospitals? Uh, no, sir, but the Foreign Office have been through. Mr. Cochran is a consul in the visa section of the American Embassy. Met his missus in Vienna when she applied for a visa to go to the States. You, uh, you could almost write a book about them, sir. They fell in love at once, got engaged and married in a month. Of course, she didn't need the visa then, because Yes, she... yes, all right, Lyle. Come in. Any news of the shamrock button, Sergeant? We've had no luck in the London houses, sir, but I've got a short list of provincial manufacturers who go in for these individual designs. Notify the local stations. Yes, I've done so, sir. Come in. And I've enclosed a photograph. Morning, sir. Well? We picked up some of the jewellery in Reading. They passed it at a pawnbroker's there. Who's they? Well, from the pawnbroker's description, sir, it sounds like Mike Pearson. Find him. I've got a call out now. I suppose there's no news of Mr. Jeffries. No, sir. Better get on to it again. His wife's on the phone about twice a day. Yes, sir. What kind of thief takes a baby and leaves an expensive pram? Lunatic? That's unlikely. Ransom? Low on the list. What's high, sir? I don't know. Woman starved of mother love, maybe? Kids took it for a dare? Oh, where are they keeping it for Pete's sake? The child's been missing for 40 hours. I know how long the child's been missing. Get on with it, all of you. 
I'm going down to Slough. I'm chasing the paper back, sir. Lyle, you have a genius for the obvious. He's got his name down for an ulcer. He took delivery of those years ago. What's his home life? A singularly unattractive furnished room in Earl's Court. Poor dear. Emotion is unbecoming in a policeman, Sergeant. I know. I was a rookie myself. <laughs> Madam, the telephone. It's news. They said Simon. Hello, Sue Cochran. Who is it? Yes, Gamble. Yes. One moment, please. Someone called Gamble. Says she's sure she saw Simon on Tuesday. Recognized him in this morning's paper. You take it. Hello, Mr. Cochran here. Yes? Yes? Yeah, thanks. I've got it. We'll be right over. The moment I laid my eyes on that, I knew. The woman come in and asked for an orange. Well, he was too young to eat it all. The baby was, so I squeezed it for him. Are you sure it was Simon? Yes, I'm telling you. I said to Gamble this morning, I said, I'm going to get hold of those people and tell them. Hey, Gamble? That's right. And it was Tuesday. But of course it was. Hey, Gamble? That's right. What time did this happen? Oh, after tea. Near closing time. About six o'clock, I reckon. Did you see which way they went? Well, of course I did. Across the road to the coach station. Hey, Gamble. That's right. Come on, Lee. Thanks. May I have that, please? Yes. If it's going to help you find him, you take it. Poor little kid. <laughs> between six and seven last Tuesday evening. Oh, come on. Yes, I did. I'm on the Cambridge run. I left on my last turn about 6.30. Was there a baby on that coach? Baby? Show him, Lee. Well, I think that's the kid. Yes, I remember. Had a little curl right in the front. He was sick. His mother told me to drop them off at Little Henham. Where's that? About five miles this side of Royston. Where did they book for? I can't remember that. Is there a coach going on the same run now? Yes, mine. I'm due out of here 11.15. Here, that's my writing. What there is of it. M-A-R. Now, let me see. Oh, Mrs. Marley. She had it, Claire's on Tuesday, 48 Westgate Grove. And uh, Mrs. Martin, she had it, Claire's on Tuesday, too, 24 the Burnham Crescent. I'm afraid those are the only two we've got with MAR, sir. Marley and Martin. What about Monday? No, we don't Becky Claire's on Monday. I see. Do you think you'll find the little boy? I hope so. Thank you. Do you know, I've got a theory about this. I said to my husband, I know exactly what's happened to that baby. Oh, what? It's my opinion the Russians have got him. What would they want him for? <laughs> well, if we knew that, so we'd know everything, wouldn't we? Yes, I, I suppose we should. I'm sorry. I didn't see the London bus coming on Tuesday. Dad was on. Can we have a word with him, please? He's not here, I'm afraid. He's taken a fare into Walden. Thanks. Yes? What is it? I'm sorry to disturb you, madam, but uh, are you Mrs. Marley? What's that to you? I'm a police officer. And I'm in my bath.
But someone must have seen them. After all, we do know she got off here. And the sidewalk bobbin had swallowed her up. I'm beginning to think that bus conductor imagined the whole thing. Of course he didn't. He remembers the baby was bus sick, and that's why he put them off here. Bus sick? What do you do with a baby that's sick? Excuse me, where's the chemist shop? Over there. Thanks. Try next door. No use you knocking. The chemist's out fishing. You're looking for a woman and a baby, aren't you? Yes. Some woman brought a baby into the shop on Tuesday night while Mr. Hodges is doing up by hand. Was the baby sick? You're telling me. Old Hodges is jumping mad about his floor. Do you know where they went? She asked me if I knew where she could hire a car, so I sent her over to Mr. Carter. Thanks. Come in here accusing me of stealing a baby. I never heard of such a thing. I'm not accusing you of anything, madam. But you bought your eclairs at Lidstone's. Oh, what? I'll tell you this, if every time I buy a couple of eclairs down at Lidstone's, I'm to get a copper on me doorstep, I'll go elsewhere. Please, madam. All I want to know is where you ate them. Ate them? Oh, I never ate them. My husband did, in here, in this house, last Tuesday for his tea. And if it's all the same to you, he'll have them next Tuesday and all. Uh... Here's Dad now. Did a woman with a baby hire your car on Tuesday? The baby had a toy penguin. Black with a white front. That's right, I drove him. Where to? Oak Hill Farm. Other side of Royston. Can you take us there now? If you can pay the fare. It's seven mile. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did go up to town on Tuesday. Why? Thank you. Did you take your lunch with you by any chance? Yes. I always take a little picnic lunch to have in the park when I go up shopping. Could you remember what it was you took? Of course I can. Cheese and lettuce sandwiches. And a chocolate eclair? But how clever of you. How on earth did you guess? Have you got second sight or something? No, no. Just the bag. What time did you leave the park? I went in time to catch the three o'clock green line from Marble Arch. I have to meet my kiddies out of school at four. And uh, did you meet them? Well, of course I did. I do think you might tell me what this is all about. I'm looking for a missing baby. He was stolen on Tuesday and he was in Kensington Gardens that afternoon. Well, I didn't take him, I can assure you. I've got three of my own already and that's quite enough for me, thank you. Just be a minute. What do you want? Did a woman bring a baby here on Tuesday night? What if she did? Is he still here? Why? Well, we want to see him. What for? Because we think he's our son. Is she crazy? We've traced the baby here. Wait here. Can I have a look at that? If you want a hand, Governor. The wife says you can come in. You wait here. sleeps on her face. She? Oh, 
she's my sister Jill's love. Oh, I'm sorry. The kiss curl must have misled you. My sister had to go to hospital for appendix, quick. So she went up and fetched the baby. It's very hard on your wife, sir, but we thought it best to let her see the baby. All right, save me, please. Tea, sir? Thank you, Davis. Any luck at Slough, sir? No. Dead end. The Cochrans had a bad day, too. They got a lead, or thought they had. Went careering off down to Hertfordshire. Too bad for Mrs. Cochran. Perhaps he'll tell the police next time. Mm. I got Benny, sir. Oh, good. Arrange an identity parade tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Any news of Dawn's fate? No, sir. Still plying through the printers. Sergeant Cook's well away. How did you know the Cochrans went down to Hertfordshire? Oh, well, he phoned up to see if there was any news. And of course there isn't, sir. That woman, Mrs. Jeffries, is here again, sir. Oh, that's the lady whose husband married someone else, sir. Well? Says she wants to see you. She shouted in the odds, sir. Won't be satisfied till you come. Must be my fatal charm, Thorne. <coughs> Did you say something, Lyle? No, sir. I thought with Slower Flop, he'd be eating the carpet. Pam says he's got charm. There are a few in the scrubs who wouldn't agree with her. Well, if he's done a moonlight flit, it's up to you to find him. And send somebody responsible. What's this lad know about absconding husbands? Don't you ever attend to anything yourself? Almost all day long, madam. Well, I've paid rates all my life, and I'm entitled to some protection. Has your husband threatened you then? Him? Threatened me? Huh. I've taken my hand to him more than once, but he wouldn't dare lift his to me. Why did he leave you in the first place? Wasn't he happy? Happy? Of course he was happy. I've been a very loving wife. Very well, Mrs. Jeffers. We'll keep you informed. This way, madam. And when you find him, send him home. I'll forgive him. Pills didn't work? I didn't take them. Why not? They might need us in the night. But I could wake you. I oh, wouldn't be awake, not be woken. It's more than 48 hours. Two days. Lee, suppose he's been smuggled abroad. I remember reading about an international baby selling racket. No, it couldn't happen. The police are watching all the ports. Craig told me. But they could dye his hair. Who'd recognize a little boy except his mother? They drug these children so they won't cry. I read it. They drug them. Suppose... Shut up! I'm tired to death of your supposings. Be quiet. Luck with the shamrock button, sir. Firm in Bradford recognized it as one of a special set they had made for Mantillas. Mantillas of Mayfair? Yes, shall I go and see them? No, I think it's time I had a little of the glamour. You help lie with the printers. I want to know what happened to Dawn. Yes. Yes, of course I recognize this button. It's one of a set I had especially carved to my own design. Who were they for? They adorned a red velvet coat I made for Viscountess Cardale. All of them? Yes. Oh, do try and keep still, Fiona. None were used on anything else. Certainly not. They were quite unique. What's this uh, Lady Cardale's address? Uh, let me see. Um, 31 Hyde Park News. Can you tell me where I can find Viscountess Cardale? Jumbo? You're wanted. Oh. I'm Cardale. 
Well, get on with it, Nigel. Get on with it. That baby's got to be delivered this afternoon. I'm Inspector Craig, Lady Cardale. Oh, so you got her then? Who? Winifred Kelly. I have a smoke on that. I came to inquire about a red velvet coat. Yeah, the one she went away in. Well, don't look as dense, man. I reported the loss of that coat to your people a fortnight ago. And tell them that Kelly had disappeared wearing it. Oh, that's a matter your local station will be dealing with. I came to see about a different matter. Did this button come off the coat? Indeed, yes. They cost a fortune. And tell us a thief. It was found by the Peter Pan statue in Kensington Gardens. Did you drop it there? <laughs> no. I haven't been to Kensington Gardens since my son was a baby. <laughs> but he ever grew up. You don't know where Miss Kelly went, I suppose? Not a thought, old man. Not a thought. No, Nigel wouldn't. But one thing is certain, Inspector. Mm. Kelly followed a pair of trousers somewhere. Silly girl. Born with a banana skin under her feet. You uh, gave a description, of course. Mm -hmm. Photograph, 16 mil film, the lot. Let me know when you find her. I'll make the charge myself. Would you care for a glass of wallop, Inspector? I keep the barrel in the garage. No, thanks. Not while I'm on duty. Good day. Good day. Where have you been? Walking. Looking into every pram. That's right. Any news yet? No. Why did you lower the blinds? The room's too light. I never thought I'd hate the sun. How long is it? Ein Kaffee, Frau. Nein, danke. Pete's sake, speak English. How long is it? I don't know. I've forgotten how to count. What are we doing? What's anybody doing? We did plenty yesterday. Went off on a real wild goose chase. That's why you're tired today. I'm not tired. I just know I'm never going to see Simon again. I told you not to talk that way. I'm sorry. No use calling the police. They would have called us if anything had happened. He's dead, I tell you. Dead. Give me a hand with these. I found Mrs. Jeffrey's husband, sir. Oh, uh, why? Couldn't help it, sir. Practically fell over him. Tell me, what's the bogus Mrs. Jeffrey's like? A smashing redhead, sir. How much time will Jeffrey's do? For bigamy? About nine months with remission. She won't wait for him. They never do. What's the betting he'll be back with the loving Mrs. Jeffrey's a year from now? Oh, I expect you're right, sir. Sorry, sir. The book, sir. I found a printer off the Western Avenue. He recognized the layout at once. Trojan series. Published by Manley in Austin. Yes, they lent us the file copies. Now we'll soon find out what happened to Dawn. Oh, not soon, sir. There's 184. All different. You better take the rest of them into the main office. Yes, sir. Pass a bundle down to the section house and let the rookies read. Yes, sir. Where's Sergeant Cook? She's having a copper in the canteen, sir. Ask her to come in, will you? Right, sir. Wish we had the top of the page. Why? Well, because then we'd have the number. You want jam on it? Pam's on night duty this week. I'll sling her a few. Oh, would you like to take one or two, sir? Well, Lady Evelyn's folly. That sounds like you, Lyle. The coffin's not so comfy. Well, do me. I, uh, I've taken a liberty, sir. I sent out a general call, asked them to go over the bomb sites again. Why? <clears throat> well, sir, the baby's been missing for three days now. To my mind, it's gone out of category believed killed into pretty sure murder. Your categories will choke you, Lyle. Y yes, sir. Come in. Get your books down to Pam and don't come back. Yes, sir. I want you to find a girl called Winifred Kelly, Sergeant. Tie up with Savile Row. 
I'll put you in touch with the Viscountess Cardale. Yes, sir. Have a word with her son, if you can get him alone. Yes, sir. If my hunch is correct, the two missing shamrock buttons will be on Miss Kelly's coat. Very good, sir. Is that all, sir? You might give Lyle a hand with these books. That sounds like you. The cop wore skirts. Any news of Dawn's fate, communicate with me at once. Yes, sir. Whole area search, Sergeant. Very good, sir. And collect another pile of rubbish. You're looking for a baby, Mr. Craig. Not a bicycle. Mrs. Cochran. I'm sorry I said that about the bicycle. Looks like a real one. Yes. My brother and I used to sail a boat. We made it ourselves. She was a beauty. And one day somebody pinched it. Did you ever get it back? Yes, we found another kid sailing it on a pond the other side of London. How did you find him? We worked it out. No good having a boat if you can't sail it. And you need a pond for that. We went to a lot of places before we found the right one. And was the boat in good condition? So good, we might have been looking after it ourselves. Speaking, who is it? Never mind my name, Mr. Cochran. I'm your son's nursemaid. Pro tem, of course. And my fee for looking after him is 500 pounds. I'll give you a ring later with instructions where to send the money, okay? Well, I shall have to think that over. Now, call back again, will you? Who's that? Uh, a man at that Hammersmith garage wants to buy the car. But we don't want to sell the car. Well, I kind of mentioned that we might like to make a change. That's not true, Lee. Who was it? A man at that Hammersmith garage wants to buy the car. I don't believe you. I'll be back in half an hour. Where from? I told you, Hammersmith. Who is that? Never mind who I am. Let's talk about Simon. Where is he? Have you got him? Is he ill? No, he's perfectly happy and well looked after. And we want him to stay that way, don't we? I don't know what you mean. I'm telling you, I have your son. And will return him at a price. How do I know you're speaking the truth? Oh, I can give you proof if that's what you want. Tomorrow, 
If you do as I say. I will. I promise I will. I just want my baby back. I don't care what it costs. I want him back. Then tell your husband to stay away from the police and see that he delivers the money when we tell him to. That's all. Just do as I tell you and you'll get your baby back. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Is a kidnapping. I know, sir. I've just been to Craig. He thinks we ought to sit tight. I don't care what Craig thinks. You mustn't tell him when the man phones again. We've got to take the money and go where we're told. We'd be fools to pay ransom, Sue. It won't buy us anything but trouble. I want Simon back. I don't care if it takes every cent we have. But, honey, you know perfectly well how many people pay the ransom and then lose their children, too. How do we know Simon's still... Still alive, you were going to say? Don't you understand? I'd rather hold him in my arms dead than never know what had happened to him. Okay, I... I'll talk to Craig again. We've got to keep the police informed, Sue. It's common sense. No, Lee, please. He said he'd give us proof tomorrow. Let's wait for that, please. Please. Lyle. Sergeant Lyle's on his way up, sir. Oh. What's your news? I saw the Honourable Nigel, sir, alone. Yes? He had a date with Winifred Kelly in Kensington Gardens on Tuesday, but he couldn't get away from his mamma to keep it. So? It's my belief he gave her the red coat, sir. I don't think she pinched it. Well, that's Savile Row's business. What's inside the coat is ours. Find Kelly, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'll get through to National Insurance for some of her old addresses. These girls always go back. Good thinking, Sergeant. Better keep tabs on the Honourable Nigel. He may date again. I don't think so, sir. He's been over that grass once. No time for the Honourable Nigel, Sergeant? No time at all, sir. There's a list of the trains that pass South Croydon signal box, sir. Intermediary stations and their destinations. They nearly all end at the sea. Send out a general call along all those routes. Have every railway bank and tunnel searched. Yes, sir. Now, Lyle. Oh, yes, sir. What else can I do, Miss Cook? Nothing, sir. You've done all you humanly could. But I haven't found the baby. Who was it, Mitzi? Only the milk, madam. Who's the letter for? trying to do drive us crazy honey that's just what they're doing when did miss kelly leave tuesday it's a funny sort of job you've got did she take much luggage she hadn't got any only a box of baby clothes baby clothes all right shut the door crumbs were you born in a field with the gate open or something you know i wouldn't like my rita to do your kind of work you said baby clothes madam well i know i did she brought them home in a box they were for her sister's kid <laughs> Makes you laugh, doesn't it? Buying clothes for her relations and owing me rent. 
Do you know if Miss Kelly had a red coat with two shamrock buttons? Three. I know, because my Rita tried it on and it fit her proper lovely. As a matter of fact, I was going to keep it in lieu of rent, you see. Only Kelly went off with it on. Yes, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Clare. My Rita works on the buses, you know. Oh, really? Yes, they provide her with a uniform. Oh, yes. You want to tell the government to provide you with one? Walking about in a frock like that, you'll be getting taken for something else. And you've no idea where Miss Kelly went? I don't know no more than what I've told you. Thank you. Any road up, I'm not worried about that, because she'll be back. I see. Well, Same thanks. as usual. Uh, yes. Have you got my room, Mrs. Flagg? And Muggins will take her in, you know. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Flagg. And Sir R. Sarge, take the blooming door with you as far as it'll go. Get her. No lunch, no breakfast. You'll be ill, both of you. Answer it, Lee. He'll only hang up again. This may be the time he doesn't hang up. Please answer it. Hello. Yes? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I got it. I'm unconvinced. Lots of kids have fair hair. Where do I bring the money and when? Do you know Burnham Beaches? Good. Be there at 12 o'clock tonight. Take the Burnham Road. Leave the car by the swimming pool. Walk 500 yards back towards London. Watch for a motorcycle and sidecar. Got it? Got the money? Yes. Give it to your wife. Now bring it here, Mrs. Cochran. You want your baby or don't you? That's close enough. Now put the money on the ground and join your husband. Where's my baby? Now, join your husband.
I warned you not to try to be your own law, Mr. Cochrane. This is the second time you've disregarded my advice. It was my fault, Inspector. I'm sorry. We could have saved you and ourselves a lot of trouble. Who was he? Well, an old friend of ours. He's been inside before. This time he'll go out for a long spell. Message from Sergeant Cook, sir. She's found Winifred Kelly. Good. Where? East India Dock Mortuary. They fished her out of the river last night. She was wearing the coat with the other two shamrock buttons. Poor kid. Born with a banana skin under her feet. All right, Davis. Have you come to a dead end, Mr. Craig? No, I haven't. Please be honest with us. We'd rather know. Mrs. Cochran, I shan't close this file until I've found your baby. There you are, Pam. That'll keep you awake. Thank you. Any luck? No. Smith's Hotel. One moment, please. Mrs. Van Leeuwen, your New York call. How many of these have you read? Twelve. You have to read every page? Yes. Are they any good? I couldn't tell you. Sure? Yes, I've got it. Fate the Juggler, page 79. Ah, oh, thanks a lot, Pam. Yeah, wait a minute. What was Dawn's fate? No. <laughs> fate the Juggler. Now listen, first thing in the morning, get on to Manly and Austin and ask for a list of libraries that took the book. Then contact the local stations and have them check. Got it? Oh, I say, what was Dawn's fate? Naughty girl. You stay with the parents. Did a woman with a baby borrow this book? Well, I don't know. I'm sure so many people borrow books. In whose possession was it a week ago today? Uh, let me see. the juggler. Here we are. Mrs. Roby had it then. Who's Mrs. Roby? She's one of our subscribers. Have you seen her with a baby recently? She hasn't got a baby. No, not has she got a baby, madam. Have you seen her with a baby? Alma Roby hasn't even got a husband. Do you think we could go and see Mrs. Roby? Yes, of course. Uh, what's Mrs. Roby's address, Mrs. Clark? It's the end house, Cliff Cottages. Oh, yes, I know. I'll have a look around the back. Sir.
They're not Simons. But they're new Mrs. Cochran, aren't they? All new. You think? I think we must find Mrs. Roby. Excuse me. Can you tell me where Mrs. Roby is, please? Oh, I don't know. I expect she's gone for a walk. She always takes the baby out in the afternoon. So Mrs. Roby has a baby staying with her, then? Yes, a sister's little boy. How old is he? About how old is the child? Oh, 18 months thereabouts. Tell you the truth, I haven't seen much of them. Alma Roby keeps herself to herself. Oh, poor soul. She's still under the doctor, you know. Who is Mrs. Roby's doctor? Dr. Fairfax. Oh, I know where he lives. All right, thank you. There's nothing wrong, is there? Has Mrs. Roby got a favourite walk? Oh, she only goes to one place. Wait here, Lyle, in case Mrs. Roby comes back. Yes, sir. We'll wait too, Craig. Right. Sue! Sue! Sue, wait a minute. Where are you going? That woman says Mrs. Roby often goes for a walk up there. Come on. You were lucky to catch me. I'd have been out of my rounds in a few minutes. Mrs. Roby is the widow of a merchant seaman. He was drowned six months ago. She was expecting a baby. And she lost it? Yes, the shock, of course. I'm worried, Inspector. She comes to see me every week, and there's been no mention of a baby. When was the last visit? Yesterday. I'm treating her for anxiety and neurosis. Sent her to London last Tuesday to see Burroughs, the nerve man. Tuesday? Which hospital? All Saints. By Kensington Gardens? Yes, that's right. Are we going as fast as we can? They went up there, sir. The woman next door says that's where Mrs. Roby usually goes for her walk. Come on. My patient isn't normal. Don't rush it, Sue. We don't know what kind of woman Mrs. Roby is. Too late. I just hope they don't scare her, that's all. Excuse me. It's lovely up here, isn't it? Very nice. If she thinks they're going to take the baby from her, she might do anything. Do you often bring your little girl up here? It's not a little girl. What's his name? Baby. I am very fond of babies. Is he pretty? It's beautiful. Simon. Is he like you or his father? His father never saw him. His father was a sailor. 
He was drowned at sea before he was born. Baby's all I've got left now. How dreadful. Weren't you? You wanted a baby. No, the baby's only chance is praying. I know just what you mean. I lost my little boy once. I'm never going to lose mine. I'll never let you go. Never. Could I hold him just for a minute? No. No, this is my baby. Nobody ever holds him but me. Who are you? What do you want? Why don't you go away? I only want to look at him. You want to take him away from me? Well, you're not going to. Nobody's going to touch my baby. I'd rather send him in the sea with Jim. Come away from the edge, Mrs. Robbie. How do you know my name? The doctor sent you. Jim! Jim, are you there? I'm coming! Please, stop her! Nobody can stop me now! Mrs. Robbie. Are you there, Jim? I'm bringing baby to the sea. So lovely in his friend. I was lonely. Of course you were. Dr. Fairfax, I'm afraid we'll have to charge you, you know, but we'll do the best we can. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>